In this lesson, we're going to explore the reactions of alkynes, focusing on electrophilic additions. Alkynes undergo the same electrophilic addition reactions as alkenes. Because alkynes have two carbon-carbon pi bonds, the product form often depends on the amount of electrophile that's been added. Hydrohalogenation reactions of alkynes are sensitive to the number of equivalents of electrophile that are added. In this example, you can see that one equivalent of HBr has been added to one propyne, and you can see that the result is a vinyl halide, adding HBr across one of the two carbon-carbon pi bonds. And because the reaction has Markovnikov regioselectivity, the bromine is placed on the more substituted carbon of the alkyne. In the second example, an excess of HBr is used. The reaction proceeds to add HBr across each of the two carbon-carbon pi bonds, resulting in a geminal dihalide. And again, because the reaction is Markovnikov regioselective, the two halogens are placed on the more substituted carbon of the alkyne. The mechanism of the hydrohalogenation of an alkyne is essentially the same as for an alkene. In the first step, one of the two carbon-carbon pi bonds is protonated by the strong acid to give a carbocation, specifically a vanillic carbocation, in which the positive charge is placed directly on an alkene. Vanillic carbocations are relatively unstable, due primarily to the enhanced electronegative character of an sp carbon relative to an sp2 carbon seen in a normal carbocation. In the second step, the carbocation is attacked by the bromide liberated in the first step to form a carbon-bromine bond and give the final product. Alkynes also undergo acid-catalyzed hydration. A mercury 2 plus salt is often added to further catalyze the reaction, particularly with terminal alkynes. As expected, the reaction is Markovnikov regioselective, placing a hydroxy group on the more highly substituted carbon. The reaction initially results in the formation of an enol, which is relatively unstable and undergoes a special rearrangement called tautomerization to give a carbonyl compound. So here I show the mechanism of an acid-catalyzed tautomerization of an enol. The first step looks exactly like the first step of the acid-catalyzed hydration. The alkene of the enol is protonated by the strong acid to give a carbocation. In the second step, a weak base like water removes a hydrogen from the oxygen to form the carbon-oxygen pi bond. The result in most cases is the formation of a ketone. The acid-catalyzed hydration of an alkyne is not sensitive to the number of equivalents of electrophile used. The initially formed enol intermediate tautomerizes very rapidly, preventing further addition. Alkynes also undergo halogenation. Regioselectivity is of course not a concern since the same group is being added to both carbons. The reaction is sensitive to the number of equivalents of electrophile added. So in the first example, one propyne is reacted with one equivalent of Br2, adding bromine across one of the carbon-carbon pi bonds. Remember that halogenation is anti-stereoselective placing the two halogens on opposite sides of the pi bond. In the second example, one propyne is reacted with an excess of bromine, adding Br2 across both of the carbon-carbon pi bonds, forming a tetrahalide. Alkynes can also undergo hydroboration oxidation. Remember that hydroboration oxidation is anti-Markovnikov regioselective, placing the oxygen on the less substituted carbon of the pi bond. As with the acid-catalyzed hydration of an alkyne, the initially formed enol intermediate is unstable and tautomerizes rapidly into a carbonyl. The hydroboration oxidation of alkynes often use a substituted borane rather than borane itself. Dicyamylborane, shown here, is a frequently used dialkyl borane. The two large branched alkyl groups enhance the anti-Markovnikov regioselectivity of the reaction and help to prevent multiple additions of borane across both of the carbon-carbon pi bonds of the alkyne. Alkynes also undergo hydrogenation reactions. Use of common catalysts like palladium on carbon results in the formation of an alkane via the addition of two equivalents of hydrogen. The reaction proceeds to add one equivalent of hydrogen across one of the carbon-carbon pi bonds of the alkyne. The resulting alkene is also reactive under hydrogenation conditions and reacts further to give an alkane. And of course, regioselectivity is not an issue because the same group is being added to both carbons of the pi bond. The hydrogenation of an alkyne can be stopped after a single addition under special conditions. In this example, you can see that the hydrogenation of an alkyne using Linlar's catalyst results in the formation of an alkene. As expected, the reaction is syn stereoselective forming a cis-alkene from the reaction of an internal alkyne. Lindlar's catalyst is a poisoned form of palladium that is reactive enough to catalyze the reaction of the less stable alkyne, but prevent the reaction of the more stable alkene. 
Alkynes can also be reduced to alkenes using certain alkali metals. The metal ammonia reduction is a net addition of hydrogen without the use of hydrogen gas. The reaction is anti-stereoselective, providing a complement to the syn stereoselectivity observed in the Lindlar hydrogenation. It's important to note that the reaction only works with internal alkynes and not terminal alkynes. So in this example, 2-butyne is reacted with lithium metal in liquid ammonia. The reaction is run at very low temperatures, often using dry ice, in order to keep the ammonia in liquid state. 